We live. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. We Hallelujah. welcome you Praise to Lord. our Hallelujah. Wednesday night. Wednesday night prayer service and Bible study. We thank the Lord for everyone that's tuned in. We hope that more tune in. Uh, we thank you for being in the Zoom room. We thank Facebook Live folks who have joined already. Those who are joining, we ask you to come into the Zoom room so you can participate if you like. Uh, we know that uh, some just like to view, some like to participate. If you want to participate, you can come into the Zoom room. Uh, in fact, as we uh, prepare to uh, go into the prayer service, I'm going to uh, attempt to copy the invitation, the link, and and have you. Uh, you'll see it in the in the portion of Facebook where you'll be able to to come right in. The passcode is study. So for those who would like to come in uh, to the Zoom room, we invite you in. Uh, we won't we won't make you say anything unless you want to, but come on into the Zoom room. We thank the Lord. Any prayer requests at this time? Any prayer requests? We ask everybody to show themselves on tonight, on Bible study night. We don't mess with people on, at Sunday school. If they want to get on, that's fine. But uh, if you can get on during Wednesday night uh, prayer and Bible study, we, we invite you to get on. Uh, look in the comment section of Facebook. I'm putting in there the copy and the link to the Zoom room. If you'd like to join us, the passcode is STUDY, all caps, all caps. Passcode is STUDY. We thank the Lord. Uh, this time, any prayer requests? Any prayer requests? Let it be made. No, much to pray for. Oh, uh, yes. Thank Can you keep the, uh, it's a, a friend of my, a, a friend of my son's mother, uh, she, he texted me last night when I was at the game, you know, and asked for prayer because she, you know, she was diagnosed. Uh, she had liver cancer. To find out this morning that she passed from her, uh, her from liver cancer. Morning, so you can pray for the Ross family. Her name was Angela Ross. Can you pray for the Ross family? And then a neighbor of mine used to live used to live a couple of doors from me. I just found out that their older sister passed. So can you keep the Drew family? in prayer for the for the passing of uh Jacqueline Drew. And um can you keep me and my wife in prayer and out know our family, the uh, unsaved, the unconcerned, the uh, unsaved portion of my family, Kadia, uh, uh Artway Bailey, Pastor First Lady, PCCM Ministry. Amen. I'm gonna ask you to uh, <clears throat> pray for a close family uh, family friend of ours. Uh, found out uh, he had have surgery and had a lung removed. It was cancerous. Uh, uh, so it's, uh, Stanley Robinson, prayer, uh, speedy recovery. Also pray for the uh, this Jones family. Not the same Jones that I've been asked for prayer, but this young man that was 17 years old in Germantown, Maryland, who was, uh, they said it was being bullied. He was missing for about over seven days and they found him dead, I believe yesterday. Um, family's heartbroken. Um, a lot of that is going on. We don't really hear a lot about it as we used to, but there is a lot, still a lot of bullying going on in school. And, uh, and, and not only that, you know, people through social media are bullying. So just keep those people in prayer as well. Amen. Yes, and can you make uh keep Tondra Cahill in prayer too, as she's um going through treatment, uh, uh as she's waiting to get put on the uh, donor kidney donor list. So can you keep her in uh, prayer as she go through that process? Amen. Yes, we will. Any other prayer requests? We have time. That's what prayer service is about. Petitioning together to uh, come together and pray for those who are in need of prayer. Anybody else? I ask you all to continue to pray for the, the Richardson family. Um, they laid to rest. Uh, my cousin on today, uh, Sandra Richardson, we ask you to continue to pray for the Isaac family. 
uh, the Coley family. We ask you to continue to pray uh, for all our extended family. We thank the Lord. It is praying time. People are checking the road. They, they're going out of here. And our job is to make sure we're living right according to the word of God and also sharing the gospel. Um, there's no time to play church. There's no time to be halfway in, halfway out. If you are, the Lord said, I'll spew you out of my mouth if you be lukewarm. In other words, you can't serve God and mammon. Uh, you either serve one or the other. And uh, the Bible also declares you choose ye this day who you're going to serve. So God is a gentleman. He's a righteous God. He's a just God. He's going to give us time to get it right. But every to every man and woman, boy and girl, it's a point in time that we'll have to answer to God on a personal uh, level, not just on the rapture level when he comes back for his church. For those who are in Christ and die before the rapture, and they die in Christ, when the rapture comes, they shall rise first. We thank the Lord. Uh, that is the word of the Lord. Any other prayer requests at this time? All right. If not, let us go to the throne of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness, your multitudes of tender mercies. Lord, we thank you for how you blessed us to see another day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, you heard the prayer request. Lord, you are mighty God. Oh, Lord, you are awesome. You're all-knowing. You are the Prince of Peace. Lord, you give us confidence and joy that surpasses all understanding. So, Father, we come to you because we find you are mighty. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, you are all-powerful, Lord. And, Father, we come to you, Lord, because we also know that you are a healer, Lord. Father, we ask you to touch the Ross family, Lord, the Drew family, the Edwards family. Oh, God, the Bailey family. Oh, God, all the families, Lord, of the earth, Lord, the, uh, Stanley and, and the Jones family, Tondra Cahill, uh, the Richardson family, oh, God, the Isaac family, the Coley family, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, the, the, uh, the Melton family, Lord, we ask you to, to touch all those families, even the ones I haven't called by name, Lord, touch them right now in the name of Jesus, the Bostic family, Lord, touch them right now. Touch Elder Bostic, Lord, strengthen her right now. Oh, God, she knows, oh, Lord, that uh, you'll never leave her forsaken, Lord. We ask you to continue to strengthen that family, Lord. We ask you to continue to strengthen uh, all, oh, God, the members that are partakers, Church of Christ Ministries, all those who are in the body of Christ, the other churches, Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, have your way today, Lord. We ask you to touch the spiritual leaders everywhere, Lord. Touch the political leaders, Lord. Oh, God, we need you like never before. Lord, we ask you right now, continue to encamp us, oh, God, that we are in, uh, in protection, Lord. We, are, we find you as a refuge, a strength, a very present help in the time of trouble, Lord. Oh, God, we know, Lord, that with you, there's no failure, Lord, so we keep our hands in the master's hand. Lord, we ask you to order our steps, Lord. We ask you to speak a word, oh, God, that we hear clearly what the Spirit is saying to the church, Lord. We are the church of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. Lord, we thank you, oh, God, for your blood that you shed over 2,000 years ago, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Your blood still has power, Lord. Oh, Oh, God, we plead the blood of Jesus over our families, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over our homes, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over our neighborhoods, Lord. We plead the blood over the state, oh God. We plead the blood of Jesus over this whole country, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over the whole world. Father, we need you, oh God. Lord, <clears throat> wipe away those tears of those who are mourning, oh God. All the bereaved families, Lord. Oh God, those who are lost loved ones, Lord. Lord, we ask you to put your loving arms around them, Lord. Give them peace, oh God, that surpasses all understanding. Give them the joy of the Lord that 
they find their strength, oh God. Lord, we thank you right now for how you blessed us to even see this day, Lord, a day we'd never see and one we'd never see again. But Lord, you found it fit to keep us in your favor, and that favor is life, oh God. Uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, let not our living be in vain. Uh, oh God, you allowed us to have life uh, and have it more abundant when you sent your son, oh God, uh, to see about us. Uh, oh God, you allowed the comforter, oh God, uh, which is the Holy Ghost to fill us full, oh God. Uh, and Father, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, uh, open up eyes, ears, and understanding. Uh, oh God, let us not err, oh God. Uh, oh Lord, look into the right uh, or look into the left. Let us look to the hills uh, which come with our help, uh, all our help coming from you, Lord. Uh, oh, God, we need you, Lord. Uh, oh, God, for a time such as this, uh, you have saved us, Lord, uh, to stand on your word. Uh, oh, God, you have saved us, Lord. Uh, oh, God, for a time such as this, uh, that we be the oracles, uh, that we be the mouthpiece. Uh, oh, God, to lift you up from the earth. Uh, you said if you be lifted up, Lord, uh, that you all draw men unto you. Uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof uh, and they that dwell therein uh, oh God and we know this world is a sinful world and enmity uh, oh God uh, and Lord before you Lord uh, that's why you sent your son uh, to save the entire world uh, some who have accepted him oh God uh, they already got their ticket out of this world uh, but Lord we have a job to do uh, you called us to do uh, the great commission uh, that we accept you as Lord and Savior, uh, that we allow you, Lord. Uh, oh, God, we're nothing more uh, than a living sacrifice, uh, holy and acceptable unto God. Uh, now, Lord, for those, oh, God, uh, who's still teeter-tottering, uh, who's on the fence, uh, I declare right now, uh, on this day, in this moment, make a decision uh, to follow you, Lord. Uh, and in the name of Jesus, uh, let them find salvation. Uh, touch those who are unconcerned uh, in our families, uh, in our sphere. Uh, I'm talking about our friends, uh, our neighbors, our co-workers. Uh, save them, oh God, before it's too late. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, oh God, trouble on the left and right, in front of us and in the back. Uh, but Lord, you are the lifter up of our heads. We look towards you, Lord, for guidance in this last and evil days, Lord. In these last and evil days, Lord, speak to us loud and clear, Lord. But let us be willing and obedient that we have the good of the land. You said it in your word. We believe in your word. We trust in your word. We stand on your word. We believe your word. Faith coming by hearing uh, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, and Lord, speak, Lord. Uh, let your word illuminate us, Lord. Uh, you are the light of the world. Uh, you made us the salt of the earth. Uh, and Lord, we thank you, Lord. Uh, there's no excuse uh, for me mediocrity, Lord. Uh, there's no excuse uh, for failure, Lord, uh, because you've given us the victory. Uh, oh, death, where's thy sting? Uh, oh, grave, where's thy victory? Uh, Lord, you came, Lord, uh, and you sent back a comforter. Oh, oh, God, so let not our living be in vain. Uh, oh, God, we trust you today, Lord, uh, that if we obey in you, Lord, uh, oh, God, you will bless us, oh, God, for a time such as this, uh, on this side of glory, uh, we'll still have much success uh, because your word said so. Uh, you made us prosperous people. Uh, Lord, if we obey your word, uh, meditate in it uh, day and night. Uh, Lord, we know, oh God, uh, that we will have much success in you, Lord, uh, that we do everything that we do uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, there is no name uh, that's higher in the heaven or, or in the earth than the name of Jesus. Uh, have your way, Lord. Bless, Lord, and keep us, Lord. Uh, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you right now, huh? let us walk and trust in you. Trust in every word, every precept, Lord. Huh? Oh, God, help us to not 
every I cross every T by your grace, Lord, because your grace is sufficient. Uh, Lord, we know without you, we can do nothing. Uh, so we abide in you and your word abide in us. Uh, and Lord, we thank you because the same bringeth much, uh, <clears throat> the same bringeth more fruit, much fruit. And without you, we can do nothing. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We glorify you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, have your way. In Jesus' name, have your way in this Bible study on tonight, Lord. Uh, let me teach with clarity uh, and certainty and authority. Uh, oh, God, by your power and by your might, uh, let the hear of the word uh, and of the study, Lord, uh, that we uh, receive it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, let it be a help to someone uh, or let someone take it to help someone. Uh, let us pass this word on, oh, God, uh, that people have blessed hope, uh, that blessed assurance that one day uh, when this life is over. Oh God, we have a home that's not made, oh God, of hands, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. And we magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all come on on camera. Come on into, into the classroom. Hallelujah. I declare, no matter if I just wake up or Hallelujah. right now, God has made me for a time such as this, and who I am is what God has me to be at this present time, and he is evolving me. He is taking me to another level. He is transforming me. If you don't declare that on today, my God, I want people to see my face. I want people to know who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm a friend of God. I'm a servant of God. I'm everything God wants me to be. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on online. Let me see your face. Let me see your face. We thank the Lord. Now, if you don't want to show your face, I'm not going to beg you, but we thank the Lord for your being. You know, I miss people so much in being alive and coming together. Whether you all believe this or not, I love people. I love being around people, and, and we talk about the Lord, and we talk about how God has blessed us in this life that God has given to us. And when we receive Jesus Christ, we have the abundance of God to do all things yeah. based on what God has called us to do. Right. Look at somebody and say, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We thank you. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. thank God. God is going to continue to bless you. Stop. Don't be dismayed. Some of us, we got powerful ministries in us. I don't know why we're so scared to, un to, to, to release what God has placed in us. Stop playing with it. Stop playing with it. I declare right now, this is a year of great transformation. God is going to transform us. I'm different than last year. I'm, I'm different from last year. So I need something different from God. I need more of God more than I did last year. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. This is a new year, a new day, a new hour. Yeah, all those things have passed away. So on tonight, I want you to declare that God is transforming you. Now, if you believe that, move accordingly. Don't look the same. Somebody need to look different. Somebody need to do something different. Somebody need to expect something different. We can't be the same and do the and do the same thing and expect something different. We have to change up. I'm talking about change up and expect more from God. So therefore, if we expect, expect more from God, we should expect more from ourselves and our walk. It says, much is given, much is required. It is time for us to stand on the word of God. It's time for us to, to, to understand that we have the word of God that we can share with those who are losing hope. There are so many people losing hope. There are so many people in despair. There's so many people that just need somebody to say, I love you, that I'm concerned about you. And I wish I had somebody on this call tonight on Facebook or on the Zoom, in the Zoom room, ready for this transformation that God is bringing. If you receive uh, that word of transformation on this evening, I just want you to begin to clap and praise God for your transformation for the better. Hallelujah. It's great transformation. Hallelujah. Great transformation. So therefore, we have to be transformed. The renewing of our minds, it's a continuing thing. So we can't expect 2022 to be like 2021 because we have to be different in 2022. You keep doing the same thing. I keep doing the same thing. We keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. 
that doesn't work. So it is time for us to, to receive the things of God and understand that if God be for us, oh my God, I wish somebody had finished that for me. If God be for us, hallelujah, hallelujah. If God be for us, that's more than the world against us. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. We thank God. So let's, let us get right into the Bible study. Any testimonies? I'm not going to shut nobody off or cut anybody out. Any testimonies on today? Any testimonies? Come on. Share your testimony. How good God has been. Hallelujah. Well, my, well, my, God bless. my testimony is uh, a lot of times when you, you know, you think about people and how God will let them show up in your life. Uh, on Sunday, when I got home from church, I seen this young lady that I used to do. I, I used to babysit her when she was an infant up until she was probably about nine years old. Mm -hmm. And I see, saw her name on my caller ID. And I said, oh, God, I've been thinking about this young lady real bad for the last two weeks, real hard. Mm -hmm. You know, she was on my mind. So mm -hmm. I returned her call. And she was so glad to, see, to hear from me. It's been 18 years since I heard anything from her. My God. And, and I, I just thank God how that God will let you come together again, you know. Yes, you God will. knowing all, knowing she was on my heart, and he let her call me. And I thank God for that. And uh, mm -hmm. she just went on to thank me for all the things I had done for her and everything. You know, that's beside the point. But I just thank God that he he uh, let me hear her voice one more time and hoping she in, lives in North Carolina now, hoping one day that I get to see her again. Mm. You, you, Praise you, God. you did something in her life. That's so far back. You did something, yeah. you planted something that somebody else watered and God sounds like God gave the increase. So yes. we have to be careful of our conversation around people, right? Yes. Uh, people that don't know the Lord. And they see Christian folks, so-called Christian folks, talk a yes. certain way or show a, a, a something of doubt or fear or, or anger or something like that. And they see us. Why should they come into the church if your life hasn't yes. changed? Or right. if you don't walk according to what we, what we uh, proclaim or what we profess? You know, our profession is Christ has changed us. He has saved us. He's changed us. So therefore, yes. we should speak into somebody's life that uh, this, whatever we speak is being planted. And, and as the word said, somebody comes, uh, comes across them and they get watered and, and then God gives the increase. And, and let me tell you, God's word doesn't go void. That shows it right, right. there. The way you treated that young lady, she's yes. still holding on to it. And you say, how many years again? 18 years. 18 years. Yeah, she's 41 now. Look at that. Look at God. And mm -hmm. you, she came back to say thank you. She came back. Yes. Yes. After all these years. After okay. all these years. You yes. Throw your number up and say, I'm on, you know, she, <laughs> that, that is, that is uh, uh, amazing and, and all. See, sometimes we, we don't feel we give. The reason we don't feel like we give because sometimes we give with the wrong intent. We give yes. um, because we feel obligated to give. No, giving from a Christian heart, from a saved heart, from a, a renewed heart is different than when we were in the world and we were of the world. Now yes. we're not of the world. When we give, uh, is to is to help win souls to the kingdom so they can experience the goodness of the Lord as well. Amen. Any other? And I, I just want to add add one more on. Even yesterday, I got a phone call, and uh, this young man, you know him if I tell you his name. But uh -huh. anyway, he called me. He said, "Miss Barbara, I used to do daycare him too when he was a little baby. Miss Barbara." Uh, I want to stop by your house for a few minutes. And he did. And me and him, we sit and talked about two hours. Oh talked about goodness. the Lord. Mm. <laughs> and he was encouraging me. Miss Barbara, you got to make your life better in 22 than you did 21. Don't you forget what I said now. You got to make some changes. <laughs> <laughs> out of the mouth of babes, right? Yes, yes. He's younger than you, but out of the mouth of babes. 
23 years old. Yeah. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> Thank God. Hallelujah. God is good and worthy. I don't know. I'm, I'm just so excited right now about how God didn't allow me to give up in different points of my life. And that every day may not be a banner day because of my mindset, but I'm pushing to make every day a banner day, no matter what. I had a, I had a natural rough day today. I just want to, I just want to say that I had a natural rough day, but you know what? I thank God for it because guess what? He got me through it and I give him all the glory. It's nothing. It's not because of my own might. When you, when you and I trust in God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all can talk back to me. You can press and come off a of mute. I want this interactive, especially from our ministers and our deacons and our missionaries, those who are not foreign to the word of God. I need to hear back from you. People out there need to hear back from you. Not that you agree with me that we're in tune and enthused about this Bible study. We thank the Lord. I want everybody participating. No time to lay back. No time to relax. No time to to, to uh, incline, you know, uh, recline your chair and, and, and get easy. Now let's be on the edge of our seats with Bible study. New, new, new. Today's a new day, a new year. Like I said, new hour. It's time to go. It's time to uh, get into the fifth gear. Some of us haven't even taken the brake off the car. You know, we're still trying to move, and the car is telling you the brake is on. It's time for us to take the brake off and move forward. I need to hear from everybody that's on the call, uh, on the uh, Bible study, so we can help encourage those who are not and might be looking via Facebook. Uh, it is time. It is war time. It is war time. It is war time. But thank God that the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. All right. We're going to go through some scripture on tonight. We're still talking about deliverance. Man, there is power in deliverance when people know that you've been bound or or or, or uh, other people who you know have been bound and you see the freedom they have when they're in the Lord. Um, I, I declare I am I am not bound. Uh, I declare I am not uh, uh, chained down. I am free. Uh, why am I free? Because Christ is in me. But still, there are some areas in my life I know I want renewed. I want to be delivered from certain things. It could be it could be staying focused. It could be being persistent. It could be being uh, more committed. Whatever it is, let's get to that next level together on tonight. I need feedback. I need to hear from everybody because I learned too. Even though I'm the Bible teacher on tonight, I need to hear back from the students because I like shifting gears and be, becoming the, 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 from the teacher to the student. I, I'm still learning. Everybody, if you're not learning, then you're dying because in learning, you begin to grow even more because you hear different perspectives, how people feel about the Lord and his word. We thank the Lord. All right. So take your Bibles out on tonight. I'm going to use my phone as my Bible tonight. So I can get to scripture uh, faster. I hope you, however you need to do it, that's fine. But let's get into the study. Uh, thank, I thank God for Elder Melton last week, uh, talking about prayer and taking up uh, where I could not be a part of the Bible study on last week. I really missed it. I was on, uh, on the edge of my seat. I think I interrupted the training I was going through just so I could uh, uh, get a glimpse of it. We thank the Lord. Um, we, we thank God. So let's let's get into the study on tonight. I'm not going to put up the uh, PowerPoint because I uh, had, had a little trouble where that uh, kind of messed up um, how the video and, and the audio was transmitting. So I'm just going to kind of try to review a little bit of what we talked about. Uh, last time we talked about the, the, just being in the stance of... of um, of being delivered from, from certain things and how we have to uh, entrust God to help us be delivered. Um, you know, the enemy, his desire is to sift us as wheat. That's, that's from the word. Uh, so we can't be wavering when we have our faith that, that God can get us through. There's a point of um, 
we have to we have to admit or confess our wrongdoings or our the vices that we have in our life. And I'm not saying confess it to everybody or confess it to anybody, but we must confess it to the Lord Jesus Christ. We must go to him. If we want to be delivered from things, we have to go to God. We have to work on it ourselves. We have to move as God has given us um, the authority to move in him. And he will help us through these things we need to be delivered from. Um, there, there are some things that we're going to talk about on tonight. It might get a little dicey for, for some folks, um, but without indicting anyone or anything, because there's no condemnation, uh, those who are in Christ. So we have to understand this Bible study is to help move uh, each and every person in the direction in which God wants you to go in, uh, is to be helpful to you and I to reinforce some things we already know but to make sure that we know it enough that we can help the next man or woman, a boy or girl. Uh, we have to get in a better mode to be a church that is reaching out. You know, I am the vine, you are the branches. Branches reach out, but stay connected to the vine because without the vine, there's no life in the branches. Uh, we, we thank the Lord that, that God has shown us when we do uh, stay in him, we can do we can do no wrong because when things go right, he gets all the glory. When things don't go so right, we can take it to him uh, in prayer, and God will begin to move on your behalf, begin to move uh, on the situations that that have have hindered us at times and stopped us from being who we can really be in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Uh, so we're going to talk about deliverance. There, there, there are many things we can be delivered from. The main focus on tonight is addictions to drug, uh, alcohol, to sex, to lying, to cheating, to stealing, whatever your addiction is to let you know you're not hopeless. In fact, you are a catalyst for victory. You are, you are a catalyst for victory. You are the, the reason that Christ went to that cross. You are the reason that he went to the cross over 2,000 years ago and got up with all power in his hands because he looked down in 2022 and said, they're going to need my help. He looked down into 2022 and said, oh, my God, my child, look at my child, my child. I got to reconcile my child. I have to help my child. You and I are the reason why God sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I'm so glad about it. I'm so I'm still excited about uh, Christ uh, helping to win me back to God the Father. I'm, I'm so excited about it still. I don't know if anybody can go with me in terms of just being excited. I don't want to follow no dull, disillusioned person uh, you, you all can fault me from that. You not like me because of that, but I'm telling you, Craig, what's in Christ? Christ is exciting to hear about uh, what he did way back then and what he's still doing today. So I know that this addiction thing or whatever you or I have to go through, whatever we're going through, that God is able. Anybody know God is able? Amen. Oh my Amen. God, he's able. That's why I will not take my hands out of the master's hand. We thank the Lord. The addiction that you and I go through, God is able. There are people who, who feel, you know, back in the day, you're a cigarette smoker, you, you know, you, you, you're a drunkard, you come to church, alcohol in your breath and all that. And, and, and the, the, some of the old founders were pretty much, you know, uh, they, they had a strong hand uh, and, and in some ways, some say they were in error in the way that they handled some of those things. But I'm just telling you, God's grace is sufficient. I'm just telling you that God's will is permissive or it's, it's the efficacious will of God, his perfect will. Mm -hmm. Whatever God allowed back in the day, even though some were in error, guess what? It kept you and I in the church. It kept you and I on the straight path. It kept you and I. We're still here today, so that means we have the chance that God bridges that gap until we get the, the full truth of the matter to receive it. 
not saying they weren't preaching the truth or teaching the truth, but our maturity level is different than it was back then uh, in the body of Christ. We thank the Lord. There's more of a form to receive the word now. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on your tablet, on your computer, in the newspaper, in a book. You can get it. But be careful that it's not something that is fabricated by man because even back in the day, there were hypocrites. There were, there were people who would who would preach one thing or teach one thing, and they live in another thing. Be careful, because back in the day, there were there were, there was hypocrisy everywhere. But there was also people, false prophets. They're still uh, living today. That you have to know the word for yourself. I always like telling the story about the the diamond hunters over in uh, this village in Africa, where uh, they they stole this precious jewel. And the natives captured them. And one of the guys was a translator and one didn't understand the native language. And they, they found the diamond. And then the, the villagers, they came and they captured them and tied them up and said, if you don't tell us where that diamond is, we're going to cut your head off. And, and, and he said, no, please tell them, don't cut my head off. He said, and the translator said, he said, and the translator knew where the diamond was. And the translator said, he said he doesn't know where the diamond is. And if he knew, he's not going to tell you. He said, tell him if he doesn't tell me, I'm going to cut his head off. And the translator said again, he said he doesn't know where the diamond is. And he's not going to tell you if he knew. And, and then the last time he said, the guy was telling him the diamond is under the fall on, by this rock, by the bush. And, and the translator told him, he said, I'm not going to tell you where it is. Translator took in the information, already knew where it was, but he knew for a fact that they didn't know because they didn't know the language. He knew their language and he knew the English language. They cut his head off. What's the moral of that story? You better know the word for yourself. You study to show thyself approve unto God. A workman need not be the shit. Be ashamed, rightly, rightly dividing the word of truth. Don't get your head shut up, uh, cut off. That's all I'm saying. We thank the Lord. We thank God. All right, we're going to get right into the study. And I hope you're ready. I'm going to need help in reading the Bible. Let's talk about set some bases here. You know, for as long as addictions have been around uh, in the church, it's taboo sometimes to talk about these things. But people have fallen victim to any type of condition that we would call uh, uh, an, an, an addiction. So the Bible mentions temptation, right? Temptation, suffering, and yielding to a sinful behavior. That's all an addiction is, that we yield to something that is a vice or something that the flesh desires. So, so what we have to understand that, that there is temptation. In fact, Brother James said it this way. He said, counted all joy through divers temptation. But until we learn that spiritually, what that means, how do we deal with this flesh that's yearning for, for the drug, that's yearning for the alcohol, that's learn, yearning for the sex, that's yearning for all the things that go against uh, the word of God, that, that misses the mark. Missing a mark means we sin. It's vital to remember this, that love, forgiveness, and redemption is closer than we think. And they are the core Christian values, okay? So we have to understand that we're not too far away from being delivered from things that become vices. In fact, these things are spiritual. That's why they call drinking, it's a spirit. They say, come in to the, in fact, some of the ABC stores, the alcohol, beverage, and, and, and whatever you call stores, they, they, they had the they have spirits, you know, they have the signs of, because see, anything that impairs your mind, impairs uh, your decision making is a spirit, okay, write that down, anything that impairs your judgment, impairs your decision making is of a spirit, it could be witchcraft, it could be anything that impairs our minds, not to be renewed by the word of God, or the spirit of God. No matter which path uh, you follow, there's always hope and light at the end of the tunnel, as they say. There is light 
ahead right now, whoever I'm talking to on tonight, if you have addictions, it's going to go tonight. If you make that decision to understand that there is hope in Christ, that, that you do have the power, if you do have Christ in your life, to release these things, okay? And understanding why we fall into these diver temptations, how we give over to our flesh. Because, see, the flesh, there's no good thing that dwelleth in this dressed-up dirt. There's nothing good that dwelleth in it. The Word said so. Okay, there's several passages in the Bible that deal with uh, and provide the guidance of uh, and reassurance and insight, even doing a recovery process. See, anybody, you don't have to answer. Uh, we all been down this path. I ain't going to drink no more. I ain't going to smoke no more. I ain't going to get with him or her no more because it's a sin. And, and, and we say it by words, but we don't move in the process of recovery because we don't know how to recover from what's been a vice in our life for, for, for five years, 10 years, or 20 or 30 years. And, and we think because the mere words of saying it is going to separate us from the sin. Oh, no, we need help in this recovery process. And the help is Christ himself, to understand his word. The only way to understand his word is to receive his spirit, okay? I need somebody to get for me John 2.16. We're going to talk about this stuff that's called flesh. It's the thing that tripped our forefather Adam up from the beginning, and it's written in the New Testament, and it was written back there in Genesis, what tripped man up in the beginning. And I want somebody to read that verse John 2.16. Come on, let us read. John 2.16. Yes, sir. And said unto them that, that sold doves, take these things hence. Make not my father's house in house of merchandise. You, you're reading John 2.16? John 2.16. Okay. Yeah, that was John 2.16. So I'm going to read a different version because it, it, the context of it, it says, for every, I might have the wrong one written down, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Because remember, the world, we'll find out where that scripture is. Uh, mm -hmm. The world is enmity to God, the enemy of God. I'm talking about God the Father. So in order to have us reconciled back to God, we needed something that would atone man, someone that could atone man. Well, we're all of flesh. He who had no sin was able to do that. I'm talking about the precious lamb of God. God wrapped himself up in flesh and came to save the world through his son. And we thank the Lord. Uh, so the Bible discusses the temptation in detail the, uh, in the scripture. Uh, other examples are in the stories of Job and in Joseph. God has given man free will so that man, uh, we are not constricted and make the right choices. He wants, see, God can make us do right, but that's not what God wants. He wants us to understand who he is and who we are or who we were made to be. So that's why God gives us uh, free will. He wants us to freely worship him, freely to be loose from the things of this sinful world, okay, to reconcile ourselves back with him. See, the world is full of trials and tribulation and potential stumbling blocks, and that's including drugs and alcohol and sex and all those things that are vices, but we thank the Lord fulfill, to have a fulfilling life we must give up those things, but it's not easy to do it on your own. Amen. Anybody find the real uh, scripture? First John 2.16. 1 John, that's what I missed. Thank you. Yeah. Somebody read the King James Version for me. I didn't put the one in front. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. That stuff doesn't come from, thank you, Mother. That stuff doesn't come from God. That is not God's desire to tempt us. He doesn't tempt, nor will he be tempted. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand 
Uh, the Bible discussed temptation. Temptash, temptation is put there of the devil himself, okay? The devil doesn't want us to have joy. He doesn't want us to have peace and temperance and, and long-suffering. He doesn't want us to have that because he knows it keeps us aligned with God. Being able to be aligned with God means that we're going, we're going to be with him one day. And he doesn't want that because he doesn't have that choice anymore, okay? Somebody get Thessalonians 5. Thessalonians 5. Chapter 5. Verse of 2 Thessalonians. Uh, this is, I did it to you again, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Go to the one that has five chapters. I think that's... Uh, no, first Thessalonians. First. The first, yes. Five what? Five, six through eight. Therefore, therefore, let, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Uh -huh. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, uh -huh. and they that be drunkard are drunken in the night. Uh -huh. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and, and for it for in helmet, the hope of salvation. Amen. So, so therefore, the Bible is telling us, the word is telling us, we must be sober-minded. We must, now, let me tell you, to be sober is to have our minds renewed and to follow after Christ. Here, it's talking about natural drunkenness and, and being asleep. Uh, where you can't hear the things of God. You can't do the things of God when you are impaired. You're in a different state of mind. You can't do any work when you sleep. You can't do and make decisions. Same thing when you're drunk. So in, in other words, it's telling us we must remain sober-minded, meaning keeping our minds on Christ. See, in this passage, Paul is discussing how believers in Christ must always remain what? Alert and aware of what's going on around us because we are in a spiritual warfare. So therefore, we must be prepared and have it on the whole arm of God. We must also display self-discipline. It's an integral part of being a Christian. You can't be haphazard. Uh, uh, you and I can't, we can't just do what the sinner man does and when we're in the presence of the sinner man we and, and even the integrity when we're by ourselves we can't do it so we have to recognize and understand that the word uh, of the lord is is helping us to be self-disciplined in these addictions many people are addicted when they are alone not just when they around people addiction is hidden you don't even know someone has an addiction at times because they function as the world. They can they can go do their job. They can they can quote things. They can sound so holy and just, but you don't know on the inside if that fleshly man, that inner man, is so damaged and so much in a vice that that you don't know that they they are not sober minded. Because let me let me tell you something. It used to I used to uh, laugh at this guy's name was Foster Brooks. And he was a comedian, and he could just like on a dime act as if he was drunk. And uh, I don't know if you all remember years ago, mm -hmm. and and he he would sound just like a drunk person would sound, and then he would clear it up, just as if he wasn't. I said, "What if? What if the same thing we could do that, and people do, in a different way." We can act holy for two hours on a Sunday. We can act holy for an hour and a half on a Bible study and prayer. But outside of all those other hours, we are, are in a predicament where we are around things and around people that don't help our addiction, don't help our self-discipline. What if we're around all those folks who we love and they say they love us, but see, they do from a natural standpoint. From an eternal standpoint, they don't really love you, especially if they help contribute to what you're already doing 
uh, in terms of your addiction or in terms of uh, uh, sin, okay? And they don't have the mind to help you. So therefore, they're going to do things that they believe is okay to help you, uh, and they don't help you to any stage or any beginning of recovery. And and here, here's the bad thing. Uh, the devil can't cast out the devil. <laughs> Anybody get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. if, they, if, they're do, if they're addicted with sin or whatever they're addicted with, then how can they help you or I? And, and I believe that many people want to be free from these addictions that they find themselves in. But here's what happens. They go to the wrong source. They go to people all the time. I'm telling you on this, on this call tonight, on this training tonight, on this study tonight, uh, because it's both, it's all three. I just, on this, on this training and study, that you must go to the source that can help you. OK, you and I must go to the source. Now, I know I'm in the right book of John. Now, John, I'm talking about John, not no first, second or third, but somebody go to John 16, 33. And I need you to read uh, uh, 16, yeah, 1633, just that verse. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world. Yeah, what? Peace. Okay. In the world you shall have tribulations, but. Okay, whoa, 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 time out. So peace and tribulation. That's a contrast. Mm -hmm. that's, those are, are polar opposites, if I could say it that way. But go ahead. I'm sorry. But be of good cheer. I this have is the faith. This is the hope. I'm sorry, Elder. This is the faith and hope. Be of good cheer. And then in the addiction, why? Why be of good cheer? Go ahead, Elder. That that was it. The last that was the last verse, but I just wanted to mention. No, no, no. Be go ahead, but be of good cheer. That's why I interrupted. I, I have to break it down. I have overcome the world. He has what? Over overcome the world. It, other words, when we receive Christ in our li lives, we have overcome the world too, and all the worldly vices and the and addictions that we can stumble and fall into. Amen. 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 I was going to say, you know, some Amen. people pieces when there's nothing going on, and you know everything is hokey, okey dokey in their life, but that's not peace. That's peace, not peace. When you're in tribulation, that's when you can when we have Ooh. peace. Woo. You talk about when when when, when you when you when you everything settled and then all of a sudden things start rocking and 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 your ship that you on start rocking and but the Prince of Peace is on board is in you and, and all you got to do is speak peace to it. Amen. That's 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 a it. So the world is in a place of malice natural disaster, sickness, tragedy, calamities, you name it. But John here explains how faith in God can help release us from addictions or, 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 or from disbelief, and from the obstacles that, that begin to tear our lives down, that we begin to reach out for things that are superficial and artificial and temporary that we hold on to. Oh, man, I feel bad right now. Give me a drink. Oh, I feel bad right now. Give me a smoke. Oh, I feel so lonely. I got a, uh, I got a hole right here. I don't feel complete. Let me go sex somebody up. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. But we, we find that we have peace in Christ if we have Christ in us. And that is the first beginning of the ministry that we should understand that we are in the ministry of reconciliation and people have not been reconciled, but for two hours or an hour and a half, they can look like it, they can sound like it, hallelujah. But the joke's on them, you can't fool God. Somebody, I probably lost about a few, uh, uh, two or three people on that. I'm talking about they left because they don't want to hear. But I want to see people free from their addictions, to break the, the chains of that. 
and, 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 and to put the devil on the run when it comes to their life and see their life be transformed and turn around. John explains it, how, how with the help of God, how we overcome the obstacles uh, with the knowledge and the understanding of what Jesus went through to spread his message and knowing that he had limited time to do it, where he had to disciple, there's that word again, discipline, to disciple those who had to continue to carry the message. But the Bible, along with the support of, 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 of groups and of a pastor and of teachers in the church, and, and some people need clerical, uh, 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 clinical, I'm sorry, therapy to help get them on the road of recovery from these addictions, or, or, or better yet, to, 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 to take them out of these addictions and, and stay on that road of recovery, hallelujah, with a healthy, you, you know, with a healthy surrounding and supporting uh, a group of people. Don't hang out with those who do the things that's a vice in your life. Find something healthy to do. There's so much that God has given us stewardship and management authority uh, uh, in this world because if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, if everything belongs to God, guess what? He gave us dominion over everything. So why can't we choose to, to be involved in things that give us peace that surpasses all understanding when everybody else has temptation and you're able to, 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 to resist the devil to see him flee. When we obey the word of resisting, we can get into a healthier state. Easier said than done when you don't do anything at all. I'm just telling you, everybody that under the sound of my voice, under this teaching can do what I'm talking about when we have Christ on the inside. But if you're trying to fly solo without Christ in your life, you ain't going to make it. And even those who do have Christ and not filling their, their cup up full with the overflow of Christ, you're going to have a hard time. But those who depend totally on God, woo! The devil will begin to release his his grips, his, his grip and his 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 traps. He'll go and set them up somewhere else because you'll wear the devil out. I'm telling you. Anybody want to wear the devil out? Hallelujah. I want I want the devil. Imagine somebody you wore them so bad they scratched their head till they ain't got no hair left. That's not what happened to me. Okay, we thank the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Somebody go to Corinthians. Okay. Y'all got me. First Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Oh, my God. Addiction. We have to understand that there is a relief. There is deliverance in the word of God, in the spirit that you have dwelling in you and I have dwelling in me. If it be of Christ, we're able to do it, but we have to do it under God's authority, under the will of God and not our own will. Our own will is in the flesh and it's going to be tempted every time. And it's, but, but, but God gives us a way of escape. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Is this helping anybody? Is this helping anybody? Yes, sir. First Corinthians, what I say? Yeah, 10th chapter, but you didn't give a verse. Uh, uh, 10th chapter, uh, 13th verse. I hope this is it. There have no temptation. Uh, uh, hey. what, it, it, what is it? Uh, uh, pump the brakes. Uh, I need you. You you were about to go 40. I need you to do 25 in this zone. There have no temptation. There is no temptation. There, no temptation taking you but such as in common to man. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. At every point, Christ was tempted as we were or as we are. But yet, what happened with him? No sin. Sin. Did not sin. The impeccability of Christ not even capable of sinning because he totally depended on God the Father. He didn't even depend on his own divinity because remember, he was God in the flesh. 100% God, 100% man, but yet did not depend on his divinity to keep him. 
he depended on the spirit of God, the father, to keep him. Because remember, he was, he was wrapped up in flesh. Okay? So the Bible teaches us an important lesson here. That when you are facing adversity, God has given us the privilege of choice. Choose you this day. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. And God will take care of you. Okay? Somebody get Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs, huh? And making melodies in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and Father and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now, now I, I know I might, I know I might mess somebody uh, uh, dinner wine up tonight, uh, but that's clear to me. It's, it, it tells us, and do not get drunk with wine. It tells us, but be filled with what? The Spirit of God. Addressing each other in what? Songs and hymns. Spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ. That's what it's telling us. It's clearly telling us, don't get drunk with wine. Now, not going to go into a dissertation about whether we should drink wine or not. And the doctors say the wine, one glass of wine is good for you each day. Go ahead and drink it if you want to. If you saw the news last week, they changed that. Yeah, yeah. They always, man, don't know. That, that's why a doctor, that's why it's called a practice, okay? We're the guinea pigs. But I believe God's report. Don't drink the wine if you've been there before in terms of being intoxicated or drunk, because we always think in the flesh that we have control over things until we don't. Okay? Although it does not directly refer to drinking as a sin, one could interpret God's word to mean we should not be led astray by drinking alcohol. What did I say? Oh, I just had one. Uh, you know, that tastes pretty good. And I like the way it makes me feel. I'm a little loose now. I don't feel tense no more. Let me get one more for the road. Oh man, that was really loose because now I got my towel off. Two more, you got the lampshade on your head. Looking why, like a fool. That's why it's called spirits. That's right. <laughs> It, it, it's not that the wine is bad. It's because the wine does something to impair the mind. I think James said it too in, in, in the book of James. It says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So I know this, the spirit of God that dwelleth in me. And, and, and you look at somebody who used to drink. I'm not bragging on that. I used to drink years ago. Over 30 years ago, thank the Lord for the deliverance. I used to drink Thursday. See, I was a, I was an educated drunk. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I wouldn't drink during the week because I didn't want to uh, go to work smelling like alcohol or being intoxicated so I could effectively do my job. I was a professional drunk because I picked my days. And I'm not, when, you know, when, when my oldest son was born, I said, you know what? As long as he doesn't see me do it, he won't do it. Sometimes we, professing to be wise, we become fools. <laughs> what they call that functional alcoholics and stuff? Something functional like alcoholic is exactly, and, but I was addicted. Mm -hmm. I was addicted, and until I admitted it, I could not get, uh, get it broken from me or destroyed from me and get on a road of recovery. Okay. Let's look at Romans five, three through five. Somebody read that for me, please. 
Roman 5, 3 through 5. Okay, I'm going to let somebody else read. I'm going to do somebody else. Somebody else read that for us. That'd be your contribution to Bible study on tonight. Please read. Help the, help the past out, please. Find it. Romans 5, what? 3 through 5. Uh, 3 through 5. Excuse me, 3 through 5. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh mm -hmm. patience uh -huh. and patience experience uh -huh. and experience hope. Yes. And hope maketh not a shame hmm. because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Mm. Now I see why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. In other words, you must be regenerated. You must have the spirit of Christ in you. You, you cannot see God without being born again. You must Amen. be born again. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't you listen to another doctrine. Talk about inclusion because you were born in the world and God is, no, no way God will put, put us in a burning hell, eternal hell. He doesn't. We choose to go. Um, so it, it's, it's so important. It says, it, it's, it says here that in that moment of struggle, our pain, our struggle often feels like the end of the world. When you're going through something, you think it's the end, right? If you have no hope on the inside of you. When we look back at what we have been through over the years, how many times did God relieve us from an addiction or our situation or from the sin? You know, all of us who, who have Christ in our life today can say we were once in darkness, we were in sin, and the wages of sin was death. We were surely going to a, a, a tormenting hell, an everlasting hell, but God took us out of, think about this, some of us sinned for, we became professional sinners, okay, and, and we sinned for years. Now, our minds have to be renewed, our minds have to be reshaped, our hope has to be increased, our faith has to be increased, we have to understand a spiritual word, so therefore we must receive the Spirit of God to even have a chance of the anointing destroying the yoke which is the addictions we're talking about. We're just setting, I want everybody that's listening tonight, we're, set, we're setting everything up to go specifically into the types of addictions that people are dealing with. And we're going to use scripture. We're, but this is to set us up to understand the word of God is the best therapy, is the best yoke-destroying uh, 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 process, the evidence that God understood that we would go through these vices, these addictions that we're, uh, that, that keep us from walking closer with God. God can't stand sin, y'all. He cannot stand it. It stinks in his nostrils. I, I, it, it, I, I can't fathom for those who really understand the word to continue in sin. I think Romans 6, 1 says, God forbid, because grace abounds so, so greatly, God forbid to continue in sin because we say we are of Christ that, that we, we buried our sin likewise as Christ was buried into the grave and came up into a new life. Uh, how can we con continue? Because the problem is we didn't continue in some cases in the word. I believe the more word goes in, the more things come out that God is purging out of us, that God can fully fill us with the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. Oh, so, so the remainder of the class, I'm going to give some Bible verses about recovery. Uh, but before I do that, I want to switch to something else, if you don't mind. Thank you for not minding. All right. I hope this is helping somebody. It's helping us to minister. See, we got to minister, you know, minister. You know, it's great to hear about Daniel and the lion's den, but I got my own lion's den I need to recover from. Talk to me real. Talk to me how uh, I, I sit in church and, and have my mind not on Christ or have my mind on, uh, on the sinful thing that I'm addicted to. Help me, help me get delivered from that. Great, you're a great Bible teacher, great 
preacher. You, oh my goodness, wow, you, man, you motivated me. But I go back home and I'm still messed up. No, sir. I want relief. Anybody feel the way I feel? That's how I was when, man, let me tell you something. When Bishop started talking to me and he started preaching the word of God, he started preaching the word of God. That began to work on me. I didn't, I didn't receive it spiritually, but God's word don't return void to him. Okay? You know, specifically, I want to deal with alcohol uh, addiction. It dulls the mind. Anybody agree or disagree? Y'all still agree. with me? Agree. Agree. Okay. Agree. It makes it much easier to fall into diverse temptation, destructive behavior. So Peter, in this scripture I'm about to read or get someone to read, Peter is warning the readers that when you're not sober, you're more likely to make bad choices. Addicts, alcohol, alcoholics, whatever you want to call it, may start stealing. They might start uh, uh, going into destructive behavior, beating their, their spouse, beating their children uh, to get dr more drug money because now the alcoholism is not enough. Now I need something to take me higher lying to, to cover up their addictions. There are so many avenues when we get the mind impaired and dull where the mind is not being renewed. The mind is being distilled in this place that, that Satan has, has, has tried to put you in. So because he comes to, to kill, steal, and destroy. But when we begin to get the word in us, it begins to, to work on that fleshly man but the fleshly man doesn't get a spiritual understanding, but it begins to break down some walls that God can reach us. And instead of being filled with alcohol, we can be filled with the spirit of God. We have to make room for God. Amen. For God does not dwell in unclean building uh, and being a temple. So, so we have to be alert and sober minded. Because the enemy, the devil, he prowls around to see who he can consume, to devour. And if we're not on uh, uh, having our minds being renewed, then we're going to give in to those type of things. Okay, so the alcohol, you know, I, I heard it was a worldly song. I think I heard pieces of it that says, don't blame it on the alcohol. No. There are three enemies that we have to confront. One, we resist, and that's, the, that's Satan. That's the devil himself. We resist him, he flees. The world, you just have to, you and I have to make a decision to, to not be of the world because we're in it. We can't do the things the world does. But the third one is the hardest one. Whether you agree with me or not, that third enemy is the hardest one. It's called the flesh. In fact, Paul said in some writings to mortify it, to kill it. Not literally now, but he said we have to mortify it. The way we mortify it is through the word of God, which is like a two-edged sword that will cut out the things that need to to, to cut out, it will make the incisions that need to make that God begins to speak, allow the word to be uh, spoken to you spiritually, to you and I, and that's how we, we grow in Christ. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Oh, the just shall live by faith. My God, hallelujah. The dangers of intoxication, you don't know how far you will go. Somebody read 1 Peter 5, 8 again. I think we read it already, but I don't, I don't know if we did or not. 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. We got to go home in 10 minutes. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober. Be uh -huh. vigilant. Be read it louder. I'm sorry. Okay. Be sober. Uh-huh. Be vigilant. Uh-huh. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. 
we give the teeth to the devil. It says, like a roaring lion. Is he a roaring lion? No. No. But when we give way to the devil, it will be like, think about you seeing an antelope sipping at the pond, and here comes a lion to pounce on it. That's how we allow when we become intoxicated or double-minded, not able to make decisions and bring up the word of God. David said this way, this word have I hid in my heart so I wouldn't sin against thee. But if you're not hiding the word of God in your heart, in your spirit, man, you cannot respond to the enemy no other way but in your flesh, which is weak. And that addiction will grip you to the point that you're going to make things wrong right and the things right, you're going to make them wrong. Because again, you're not of a sober mind. I'm not of a sober mind if I'm not following after Christ, if I'm not allowing the word of God to penetrate my heart, if I'm not growing. I accept Christ, but I that's all I do with the, the deeds of the tongue, just saying, you know, hey, I love God. I accept Christ in my life. He said, yeah, but, you, but you, your heart is so far from me. When the addiction gets so bad, li listen, listen, Alcohol addiction, it puts us in a frame of mind that it can get that, that mild mannered man or woman changes their whole their whole demeanor. Anybody ever seen that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody quiet, never, never hit their wife, or never uh, went against their, their husband, or, or never went against their mother and father. They become something that we don't recognize. Proverbs 20 and 1 says, uh, wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. Here I am. Think about this. Now, I'm just staying on alcohol right now. Think of this. We let something in a glass or in a bottle or, 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 or something that is made for, for profit, something that is a liquid to get inside our bodies. When I, when I thought about, when the Lord released me from that, I thought about it. I was letting a, 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 a 64, a 40 ounce, or whatever the ounces you drink, uh, or used to drink, I'm gonna keep it real, drink or used to drink, impair my judgment to a point that it can cost me money, it can cost me relationships, it can cost me my relationship, most of all with God, it can put me in a way of going to a burning hell, something in a little bottle, and I drink it, and it impairs my mind, it impairs my heart, my judgment, and it costs my God, back in the day when, when, when the devil had my mind, we get a six pack of red, white, and blue beer or, or old Milwaukee. And if it didn't run you to the bathroom, it messed your mind up. If you drank enough of them, you had to drink a lot of those, but some of us couldn't afford. That's all we could afford. And we let cheap beer cost us thousands of dollars, maybe millions of dollars because we make judgments that can cost many, many things to happen. We don't know what direction. Substance abuse is real, y'all. And certainly it makes a person do things they wouldn't normally do. Proverbs contrast drinking with being wise. Abusing substances certainly is not a wise thing to do. It's not. There are too many inc incidents. Uh, that can happen. Think about uh, drunk driving. Many people have been killed. Lives have been destroyed because someone thought it was okay to, to get addicted or to get drunk and then be able to operate normally. It will not allow you to. I don't care who you think you are. I don't care what you think you can do. That is a spirit that you're releasing in you. And my God, hallelujah. Satan's trick is to get you think to, to think that you are independent from God, even when you say you know God. To know him, act like you know him. 
for me to say I love God and I'm preaching this word and, and I'm teaching this word and, and, and I continue to sin, something's wrong. I continue to stay in the addiction, something's wrong. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not at the place I, I, I thought I was, but that's okay. Guess what? Yesterday is gone and we can't get it back. An hour ago when I, when I first started, it's gone. Can't get it back. But right now, right now, make that decision. First of all, repent of it. Ask God to forgive you through his son, Jesus Christ. The third thing, call somebody that you can trust. I'm talking about somebody that's in Christ. Somebody, somebody that is in Christ that, that God has directed you to, to help you through the word, through, through ministry, through prayer. First of all, praying. And then you will see the transformation begin to happen. And every time you want to grab a drink, grab the phone, grab the Bible, get you some help. Hey, you know, Alcohol Anonymous, I'm not going to tell people not to go there or go there. But guess what? The enemy is tricking you that God can't help you. You might need some human intervention. That's okay. Just get intervention. So you can draw closer to God and get that, that power, that authority, that dunamis power that God placed in us and we had dominion over everything. We're able to multiply and be fruitful, get restored. Oh, get redeemed. I wish I had somebody. Anybody ready to get redeemed right now? You don't have to wait. Make that decision. We're going to go home with me giving you these scriptures. I want you to read them. If you are in a recovery state, if you are in a place of making a decision right now to give up these vices. Oh my God. We're going to talk, finish talking about alcoholism next week. We're going to get into the drugs. We're going to get into uh, uh, the other things that, that become bondage for us, that locks us up from drawing closer to Christ. Okay. I want you to write these scriptures down. I want you to read them and, and share it with somebody that you may know that's going. It may not, I may not even be talking to you. But if I am, take these scriptures in your road to recovery. Because I'm believing right now, by the grace of God, you made the decision to come out of your addiction and begin to get on the pathway. The road to recovery is Christ. Okay, Psalms 18, verses 2 through 6. The Lord is my rock and salvation. He is my fortress. He's my deliverer. But get, get to Psalms 18, 2 through 6. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. James 5th chapter, 15 through 16. And 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12. And I want you to hold fast. Hold fast to the things of God. Allow God to open up your mind and your heart fully and come in. And you must have human intervention. Not to those who are doing the same thing and have vices and you can clearly see it. You must get to someone that's not going to say, oh, man, that's all right to do. God God knows your heart. No, you, you run from that person. Mm -hmm. And then when you're strong enough, come back and you pull them out of the miry clay because they still in the, they, they're there in quicksand. OK, uh, again, the devil can't cast out the devil. Hopefully this has helped some folks on tonight. Deliverance. Deliverance. We, we thank the Lord. Deliverance. My God. Before we close, I just want to pray a prayer of faith, a prayer that God comes into your life, helps you with whatever you're going through, because it's serious. This is a serious matter. I don't want anyone to die and go to hell. No one, not even my enemy. I want my enemy to be saved too. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. But we must study how to be delivered. We must ask God how to be delivered. 
I'm talking to someone here. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we have people that's under the sound of my voice on Facebook and Zoom that say they love you. And, and Lord, only you know, oh God, that they do, that they truly love you. Lord, I take them for face value. I'm not going to judge them. I'm not going to cast an opinion. But you said you know them by their fruits. Father, we thank you right now for the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, we ask you right now, someone that has gone through this Bible study on deliverance, they are addicted, Lord, on some substance. They're addicted, Lord, on, on some person. They're addicted, Lord, within their flesh. Lord, I ask you to release them right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody's crying right now, feeling in my spirit. Someone's crying right now because they're going through an addiction. And the enemy has tried to trick them that that's what they're going to always do. But the devil is a liar and the father of lies. Father, bring them out of that addiction right now. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood right now. If you did it for me and others, and we know that you're God, oh God, not a respected person that you can do it for them. Do it, Lord. And let them forget about those who may even know. But today is a new day. The road of recovery starts right now. The road to relief starts right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, use them for your glory, Lord, because they are somebody because you allowed them life, Lord. Unfavor, uh, unmerited favor is what you want to bestow upon them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Save them, oh God, for a time such as this. If it's someone out there that don't know you and the pardon of this sin, save them, oh God. Yes. And Lord, we thank you, Lord. Bring back that wayward child. Mend that marriage back together, Lord. Father, restore the relationship with you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we be so mindful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory shall be thine. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank God for everyone on tonight. I hope this was helpful. Uh, I want it to be impactful, not because I, I, I taught it, but we all taught this and we all received this. On tonight, if it's anyone that would love to um, contribute to this ministry in regards to giving, you can do that through Givelify. We thank you in advance. For giving, all contributions are used, of, used for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. We thank the Lord for uh, blessing us on tonight uh, with this study. On next week, we'll continue right at 7 o'clock with prayer service. And 7.30, we'll get right back into talking about these addictions. I uh, want to help somebody. That's my desire. That's my heart. Really do. On tomorrow night. Uh, we thank the Lord. Oh, give a five. You can look for Partakers Church of Christ Ministries, or you can go to our website, www.partakerschurch.org, and click on giving. We thank you. And we receive it in Jesus' name. On tomorrow night, we have Thursday night praise with Minister Derek Isaac uh, from 7 to 720. Please join in for that. That's on Facebook under the Partakers Church of Christ ministries facebook page you can catch them there it's not on zoom and then at uh eight o'clock to eight fifteen, we have our corporate prayer we thank the lord we hope you can join us if you go to our site or go to the uh, facebook page you'll find the number the dial in the code to get in we thank the lord uh, for breakthrough we thank the lord for uh redemption we thank the lord for recovery we thank the lord uh, how he is going to deliver someone on tonight. Many may be delivered on tonight. That's my, that's my prayer. And, and we thank the Lord. And there's so many different, some of the ones I talked about, like alcohol, drugs, and sex, and homosexuality, and all kinds of things. That, uh, those are tangible ones, right? But there, some people are addicted to being hateful and being jealous and, and being envious and being covetous. We're going to talk about all addictions, how that is a spirit, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. 
the first Adam. Second Adam came and destroyed all those. We thank the Lord to those who receive him as Lord and Savior. We can get not over that, but through it because Christ shed that precious blood that we are able to do it. Hallelujah. God bless you on tonight. We are already under the prayer that we dismiss. We'll see you on tomorrow night for TNP and also the corporate Thursday night prayer. God bless you all. Bless. Don't be dismayed. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you shall also reap. So good things so you can receive good things. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I love you. And I mean that with a Christ unconditional love. That's in me. God bless you. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Good night. Love y'all. Good night. Love you. Good night. Good night.